I says, it's not the best tool for ASMR. No. <laughs> you gotta put it around your head. Yeah, it's like, sometimes. Yeah, let's give her a lobotomy. Uh. <laughs> Hold still, girl. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Today is, well, tonight, it's kind of a functional whiskey business episode two, even though it won't be that much business, but it will be that much whiskey. I have joining me, Dan Wine. Wow, it's really windy outside, but Dan Wine, videographer extraordinaire, a lot of different um, specialties under his belt. Most notoriously on my channel is the acquisition of this Yamaha MT-09, it's 2019. And basically that's what we wanted to get into today, is do a little bit of a follow-up to the first impressions video, because a lot has changed cosmetically, experientially, um, and some people had maybe some questions and comments that we thought would be great to address and follow up. It'd be really useful to do so. But first, we have to get into our whiskey, and that's going to be an Irish whiskey today, and it's the Sexton. And I have the flavor profile with me, so I'm just going to go ahead and read that. Now we'll start getting us some ice. Yeah, thank you. The Sexton is a small batch Irish single malt, triple distilled for smoothness in copper pot stills and aged to perfection in European oak seasoned sherry casks. <laughs> Crafted by one of a few female master blenders, Alex Thomas, the Sexton is a balanced and approachable whiskey. We love balanced and approachable. That seems like a like a um, secure attachment. Like that's the kind of gal you want to meet at a bar, a Sexton. The Sexton. And the packaging is divine. I love it so much. It's so cute. Indeed. Looks stackable. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> That's what it's all about. <gasps> wow. Oh, this is such great sounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ASMR Wonderful. enthusiast mode. Yeah, one day I keep teasing ASMR content, and I swear to God one day I'll make it, because I was just thinking about that last time, like laying awake in bed, being like, I should be making ASMR content. I'm in for it. <laughs> Thank you very much. You are very welcome. Mm. Yeah, we've kind of in improvised a little very cute, what do we call it, a cooler? <laughs> uh, an ice bucket. And it's it's got the lid from a teapot, so it's so sweet. So, no, they don't come with lids, but you can DIY your own lid. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm, love that. That is approachable. Mm, oh, that's the sexton. That's really... <laughs> yeah. I, I was about to say I was raised on Irish whiskey, but that's kind of a questionable thing to say because <laughs> <laughs> hopefully I wasn't raised on alcohol. But, you know, Irish family, Irish whiskey. The teething. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. I know that happened in our parents' generation. I think my dad said that when he was teething, his, yeah. his grandpa would give him a little whiskey. I never had that. That you know of. That I know of, Yeah. <laughs> Well, cool. We have our whiskey. We have our business. <laughs> and let's get into this bike. So I think let's start off easy. Let's talk about the kind of cosmetic things because you've already, it's only been a month and a half of having this thing. When I looked at a calendar, I was shocked because it feels like so much has happened. But that's yeah. just the way the world is now. So yeah, name a couple of the or run us through the cosmetic things you've done so far. Cosmetically, the very first and most important thing that I got was a, uh, a lock. So <laughs> get at me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> an, an, an alarm slash lock. Um, but no, uh, cosmetic things that I have done to it recently is the exhaust. And you probably can't see it right here. But I blacked out the exhaust. And I did a very professional job at it. Um, two or three coats of primer, um, and then high heat paint, uh, a matte black paint. Um, and it, it turned out excellent. And I just felt that the, the silver exhaust, it just kept getting dirty. I don't know, it didn't look clean, you know? And now it blends in with the underside because the bike is, vast Very majority so. is black underneath. Same with the M4 exhaust, how it's mm -hmm. carbon fiber at the end. So having that black tip with the silver exhaust, I don't know, it, it didn't really do the bike justice. Um, and the M4 also comes with a full exhaust that is 
um, black pipes. Mm. So it's kind of the poor man's. <laughs> it's it's the poor man's version of a full M4 exhaust. Okay, groovy. <laughs> and so actually, now that I think about it, we're going to backtrack just a little bit. How did this bike? We can talk about the aesthetics of it off the top, like how it comes stock, how you received it, and then how you've continued to change it. Because this is an interesting color. I think that's what really attracts a lot of people to it because it's sharp without being like really over the top, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think a lot of people really enjoy that about it. It's this, what do they call it? Like ice flux? Ice fluorescent. Oh. Ice well, fluo. Oh. Nice. Ice fluorescent short. The combo. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. And again, when, when I was doing the... The, the first impression video, that's what I thought was it was Ice Flux. And I believe that's what I said was Ice uh, Flux. But yeah. Ice Fluo, short for Ice Fluorescent. Mm, okay. uh, ice obviously being the silver and the fluorescent orange, which is a wonderful combo. I, I love yeah, it. Yeah, it looks very, very good. The other one is the red and black, which I had the red and black CBR. And I think mm -hmm. it was just time for a change. When I saw yeah. this, I haven't seen anything like this color, this color combination either. Yeah. And it's kind of one of those things. It's tough to show people in photos and stuff because in person, the bike has this like very subtle luminosity to it. Kind of like almost like a pearlescence, but not really. Yeah. Camera can't pick up the fluorescence of it. And yeah. I've edited quite a few photos of the bike and I can't yeah. quite get it how it looks in real life, but I have gotten pretty close. And the fluorescence throws the ice color too. It makes the ice look more white mm -hmm. and it makes the fluorescence kind of look more orange or red, but it's kind of halfway between. So yeah, it's, it's just an excellent color. The other one was red and black, like I said, and the third one is like a, a black and green, oh, okay. green of some sort. Was the blue new for 20? The blue is the SP, which oh, isn't right. released in the United States yet. Yeah. Um, the SP is a wonderful bike, the MT, uh, the MT-10 SP or the MT-09 SP. Um, and I was looking into it, but they're not going to release that till 2021. Okay. Yeah. Which is a gorgeous bike, but this I'm, is, this, this was the deal. Yeah. Ice fluorescent is, uh, excellent as well. Yeah. And the SP, you could kind of argue that there's a little bit too much going on with it. So style wise, this is a very nice, simple design. I see a lot of people with this bike who's just slapping MT-09 all over it. And it, yeah. it kind of, you're doing too much, man, when you have four MT-09s on the side of your bike. Even right here, I see that they'll put like CP3 MT-09 with the logo. <laughs> uh, they'll have it on, I don't know, they have it on any, everything. Meanwhile, I did like the opposite with my bike. I like took off the Scrambler Ducati moniker stuff because I was yeah. like, mostly because of the styling. I thought it was in... It's paradoxical in a way that it's Scrambler Ducati Cafe Racer, but they well, made a brand out of it. If you make a known bike and you have a successful brand, I don't think that you should have your yeah. logo slapped all over it. Yeah. And that's why I like the MT-09 so much. Mm -hmm. Almost everything about this bike was perfect when I was doing, doing research that it didn't have uh, MT-09 or Yamaha slapped all over it. The only mm -hmm. Yamaha on here is this. The tuning fork logo. I yeah, love that logo. Just so the much. logo. And then you got the MT09 here, which is beautiful because that that orange again just kinda adds that dynamic to it throughout yeah. throughout the bike. Hats off to the to the team. <laughs> to the Yamaha team. They yeah, know how to do it. The Yamaha team, they they did a wonderful job with this bike. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm not too keen on on many bikes, but this one seemed to have it going on. Yeah. And the amount of upgrades that you can do to this bike is almost incredible. Mm. And being two years old, there's going to be coming out uh, in the near future a lot of different upgrades to it. They right now are pretty expensive. Mm. So perfect yeah, like timing, though. Thing. Yeah, the seat cowl is going to be one of the first things that I get mm. um, just to bring the bike together again. Yeah. And that, too, it does say MT-09 on the side of it, but it's the... It's the silver and then a little bit of orange on the side. And then I, you probably that can't see it, but there's a, a line going down the center of the tank. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of stops at the seat. But with this cowl, um, it begins that line again to the back of it. And then it ends it with the same logoed arrow of the MT-09. Yeah, that's perfect. Symmetry. Well, and so this, this one was integrated, but I think you were saying something about Maybe not loving this turn signal. They're not integrated taillights. Oh, okay. No. But is this, <clears throat> this is not the stock turn signals though, right? No. No. Because um, I don't think they would No, the stock so turn signals are so ugly. 
<laughs> so just like any other bike, though, yeah. like the stock turn signals are ugly. Same yeah, with, I yoinked mine off. Same with the the right and left. Um, everybody knows how ugly they are. Um, but no, this came with the integrated turn signals. They're not the greatest uh, in terms of visibility. Yeah. That's a tough thing. It's like that balance between aesthetics and functionality. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to put yourself at a disadvantage when you're on the street of being seen or it being abundantly clear where you're going. Yeah. It's kind of one of those things. If someone's not paying attention, they're not paying attention. Yeah. Regardless. I think the other thing was when this bike was first bought by the first owner, this was a racetrack bike. Mm -hmm. They used it on the track. And I think... They didn't really care. (laughs) Yeah. I think that was the reason why they got these this style of integrated turn or this style of turn signals is because they're so low profile Mm -hmm. and you can, you can't even see it. Oh, I hadn't even realized. So from the front, those are on the sides. Yeah. This lights up. This is my right turn signal, left turn signal. You can't even notice it. Same with the back, which is (laughs) Uh yeah. Good and bad. Um, Okay. But it is what it is. That's what I got. (laughs) It is what it is for now. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, if I had my choice, I'll probably buy, the integrated taillight system, but my bike is legal and I don't need to. So. Yeah, okay. You did that great on the front too, right? That's... Yeah, radiator cover. Radiator cover. <laughs> yeah, so I bought... Um, I heard a lot of things online about uh, the radiator getting damaged because it is a naked bike. Sometimes you can have rocks being thrown up at it. Obviously, your wheel kicks up stuff, and if you kick up the wrong thing you can damage it and replacing the radiator is a lot more expensive than getting a cover. Mm. So I ordered a radiator cover, just a very simple one. It was silver. And then I ended, I ended up painting it because I had the black paint that I did with the exhaust. Um, I did it in a very neat way where I took uh, painter's tape and I, I taped over the logo and the MT-09 and there it is again, MT-09 where mm-hmm. everything you buy for this bike just has <laughs> to have MT-09 on it for some reason. So I covered those up, uh, painted the grates black, and now it has a beautiful silver border with mm-hmm. the logo being silver as well, and then black. So it, it blends in very well, mm-hmm. extremely well. The all silver was a little bit too much. Yeah. And especially too much once I put the, the black exhaust on. Yeah, suddenly you're like, oh, there's nothing else. Silver yeah, it, it's, yeah, it stuck out a little too much. So... Painted it black and it's all coming together nicely in yeah. a month and a half of having this. And man, that's just like th- how much did that cover cost? Like le- 32 bucks. Okay. Yeah. And then <laughs> so it's just like 40 bucks worth of investment, you know, with the paint and everything. Yeah. You don't need to, uh, you never need to overdo it. I think some people yeah. overdo it or they think that they need to take it into a professional to get it done where that's not the case. You just put in a little bit of time and yeah. look on YouTube and... You can do it yourself. Especially paint things. It's like, it can only go so wrong. Like, worst mm-hmm. case scenario, you have to sand it all down again and start from scratch. Yeah. Might be a little patchy. <laughs> sure. I guess I was thinking for, like, the M4, I did want the, f- the full exhaust system mm-hmm. because it's black. And I was thinking, well, if I mess up the paint, it's you know, perfect. I'll just buy the full exhaust system. It's a win-win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A uh, foolproof plan. Mm-hmm. And I know a big... Big performance improvement for you, not necessarily like with uh, engine performance, but with the steering performance mm-hmm. was the steering damper. Yeah. So I would recommend if you get this bike to to get a steering damper. Like um, immediately. <laughs> immediately. If, if you watch the first impression video that Megan had made and released, I do talk about the steering. And compared to the bikes that I um, had previously ridden, uh, being su- both super sports or the bikes that I previously owned, both super sports, I had the F4i and the CBR 600 RR. Those didn't need a steering damper. This one did. It was almost like a motocross, motocross bike where mm. it was very loose and you can tell, and the maneuverability was great, but yeah. once you hit 80 miles an hour, there's a, you can feel that speed wobble. And there was just yeah. that little bit of uncomfortability with that. And I wasn't I wasn't going to take the chance because I like hitting those speeds Mm -hmm. and above. (laughs) And you have a bike that's, you know, almost 900 cc's. Why wouldn't you use all 900 cc's? Um, So a recommendation would be getting a steering damper. Mine was, I think, 70 or 80 bucks. The next tier up is the, I think it's called GPR, but those are like 500, 550. Um, for any bike, they're that expensive. Mm-hmm. So it's either you pay the seventy bucks or you pay the eight or the five fifty. But I mean, 
this has been a great steering damper. And you think about if it breaks, then you buy another one for 70 bucks and then you buy another one for 70 bucks and you can buy like six more <laughs> with the same price investment. for the same price. Plus the look is great. I think it looks great. It makes it look, yeah, it looks cool. Yeah. It just makes it look cooler. Um, and I, I think it has 15 settings. I might be wrong, but I only have it at like the fifth setting. All it needed was just a little bit. That's all it needed. Just that little bit of steering dampening, uh, just to make me feel a little more comfortable on the bike. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Another thing was with regards to the handling was, um, the grips or mm -hmm. the throttle. And again, in that first video is talking about how loose that throttle felt. Mm -hmm. You need an insane amount of precision. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With, um, what do they call it? Wrist control, wrist control. Let's yeah. call it wrist control. You, wrist. <laughs> you need an incredible amount of uh, wrist control for this because any little mistake it's, it's MT because it's called mm -hmm. It's stands for master of torque. And there is a, fuck ton of torque on mm -hmm. this. Um, and, and, the, the throttle seems a little bit loose and I don't know, I've gotten used to it. Mm -hmm. I say in the old, in the in first impressions video that I can definitely, get, yeah, definitely get used to it. Mm -hmm. And I have gotten used to it. Um, I think my only gripe now is I still have the stock grips and they're stock grips. Anything mm -hmm. stock usually kind of sucks. <laughs> so I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to get some new grips soon. Another thing that I was looking at was the, the clip-ons. Mm -hmm. And Megan had told me about these. The, <laughs> I think they're called, I want to say Woodford, but I'm thinking like Woodford Reserve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're wood something. Um, I can't remember what it is, but they're, they're clip-ons and they look great mm -hmm. and they drop it an inch or two inches. Um, yeah, and I want that. a little that, bit more aggressive. <laughs> I want that more aggressive look because even when we're riding on the freeway, mm -hmm. I want to be able to I speed just, like, tuck. Smashed by the wind. <laughs> yeah, and I know what you were saying. Like yeah. <laughs> when you can't, or when it was hard for you to stay up with me mm -hmm. when I had the CBR. But the CBR, yeah, you're just like, the CBR was just butter. You just speed mm -hmm. tuck, and you can hit 140 like it's nothing. Yeah. But this, when you are on that upright position, yeah, it's um, you yeah. get you get smacked. All the retro inspired stuff. That's the difference between that modern innovation and the styling because all that cafe racer stuff is all cute. Oh. <laughs> it's cute in the city and you have your little bell bullet and you're vibing and then you get on the freeway and it's hell. <laughs> you're, you know, the bell bullets rattling, this retro ass helmet. Uh, you're being slammed by the wind and unless you really get down in there and just the difference even between wearing my Icon helmet on the freeway versus the Bell helmet helps me be able to take so much more of the wind. It's just more aerodynamic. Yeah. And there's a lot of different things with that. And I imagine that, yeah, that standard position, you'd have to really kind of, mm -hmm. I don't know, crunch in to mm -hmm. get tucked in under there. Yeah, and another thing too is the windscreen where I notice mm -hmm. you don't have a windscreen. Yeah, so you're getting the full little... brunt of that wind. Yeah, it's not deflecting anything. Whereas this, as small as it is, it's it so still deflects it up to my shoulders. So, yeah. And that's in an upright position. So when I do speed tuck, then it hits the helmet, and the helmet's aerodynamic, so it mm -hmm. just whooshes around the helmet. Um, so getting that clip on and having these handles an inch down will get me mm -hmm. a little more comfortable into a speed tuck and be able to ride the freeway a little more comfortably as well. And that makes sense for the type of riding you do because these handlebars... I imagine it would be really great for someone who liked to do a little bit of everything and do a little bit of adventure touring. Like, I don't know what the luggage situation is like this, but sure. I know this would be comfortable for distance just because the handlebar set up at the very least. Maybe not because of no fairings and stuff, but everyone's got different comfort levels. Like, mm -hmm. people have done crazy things on crazy bikes. So this is such a cool all-arounder bike that those handlebars make a lot of sense. But, yeah, if you want to get all tucked mm -hmm. in there and really go fast... Yeah, it's a com it's a comfortable riding position for sure compared mm -hmm. to like a super sport where you're where you're on your arms and yeah. even having somebody on the back too. Yeah. Um is is nicer it's not for falling me. falling on top of you. Because it's not it's not pressure on my arms. Yeah. Yeah. But then you get the drawback of, well, how am I riding this? I mm -hmm. like freeway riding. <laughs> so it's like I want the opportunity or the ability to be able to speed talk, get a little lower mm -hmm. um, and not be thrown around by the wind. Absolutely. 
I'm having another. <laughs> mm, some more sexton. More sexton. It's I'm over sextoned. Americans, they're over sextoned. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's like from Chicken Run. He's like, what does he say? Pushy Americans, always showing up late for every war. Overpaid, oversexed. And over here. Really? Really? In Chicken Run? In Chicken Run, yeah. That, that like, commander chicken that, yeah, there's that, that one chicken who's the, the officer kind of guy. He's, well, he's not a chicken. He's a rooster. He's a rooster. He's a rooster. And then our guy Mel Brooks chicken rooster comes through. <laughs> Starting trouble. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyways, Chicken Run, I recommend it. <laughs> Back to the program. Mm-hmm. Um, well, dope. Sure. I think another thing with comfortability is if you're getting this bike, you're going to want a new seat. Oh, yes. This, on, on the topic of seats. Yeah. I hate this seat. And this one's weird to finesse, like you said, for opening and putting your helmet yeah. in. Yeah. Again, you know, every bike has its, its positives and negatives. Um, I found it easier for the CBR because it had two separate seats. Mm-hmm. So to hook up my helmet to it, I just popped off the back seat. Whereas this one... Um, you got to take off the whole seat and it is what it is, but it still does have a helmet holder yeah. or a hook for two helmets. Yeah. Yeah. It might not be trademark helmet holder marketed, but yeah. it works. It, does it works. And I, the main gripe about the seat is it's very uncomfortable for long rides. And I like to be on the bike for a while mm-hmm. and in, in many aspects of the riding, even cornering, um, it's hard to maneuver your ass around the seat and really get in a position in the corner. Yeah. And it's just the seat. The seat just sucks. And it's a stock seat. Like I said, everything stock usually sucks. Your your stock exhaust sucks. It's just not very slippery. I guess depending no, on it, the pants you wear too, if you're mostly in jeans, you're going to like stick to this like sandpaper. Yeah. Like my seat is actually and I do, pretty yeah. slippery in a good way. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I had a Corbin seat in that on my last bike and that seat was excellent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, this this one just sucks. It does the job, you know. I mean, it's a seat. Yeah. Um, so your options are really right now two options. There's the Yamaha Comfort Seat, which I believe runs at like two twenty. Um, the only downside or gripe about that that I have is it's very thick. So when you have a sporty looking bike mm-hmm. and then you put this thick saddle on it, it's kind of like. Yeah. You're taking away from that sport factor. I bet that's why they went with this. It's it's contoured quite mm-hmm. nicely. There is a lot of seat real estate, but it is contoured to the bike. And yeah. even up there and stuff. Yeah, it's it, it looks fine. It just God, I don't know why it's so uncomfortable. <laughs> it just is. You get off the bike and your ass hurts. And that's from like an hour of being on it. Yeah. Short rides are fine. It's just when you're on it and, and even when freeway riding and or mm-hmm. cornering on on the highway, it's just not, not ideal. So you got the Yamaha comfort seat. I wonder also if it has to do with maybe some of your weight distribution because you aren't gripping the tank as hard, like you said, because it might, there's um, some. Um, you're right, but I think that that would come down to the position, the rider position. Yeah, so that's you're on true. this upright position mm-hmm. because the handles are so high. And that's yeah. why I'm thinking if I'm more in that tucked position, mm-hmm. To be able to slide and maneuver yeah. is going to be easier than when you're in the upright position. And it puts less pressure on your tailbone. Like I've mm-hmm. had I've had a tailbone injury. So sometimes if I'm just like, that's why I didn't totally like about, well, there's a lot of reasons I didn't love cruiser style motorcycles like my Honda Rebel. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. It was great for a first bike. But mm-hmm. number one in Milwaukee, every pothole, you just feel that straight through your spine. <laughs> and that was a lot. But it, it, yeah, it put a lot of pressure on my tailbone because of how upright I was. And sometimes mm-hmm. you're even a little bit leaned back and your feet are out forward instead of like behind you or yeah, mm-hmm. behind you. So it's just a totally different ride. And some people might find that more comfortable. Some people might find that less comfortable. Mm-hmm. And depending on your upper body strength, if you've got just a little bit of shoulder arm, like you're going to be able to distribute that a little bit more comfortably in a mm-hmm. more aggressive position. A lot of people would ask me, like if your arms get tired riding more aggressively and you know usually you're that aggressive because you're going faster and then the wind kind of pushes you up a little bit like there's a little bit of that that environmental counterbalance Mm -hmm. and then you can also I think bikes like this are really nice in including my bike is that you kind of have a broad variety of positions you can take 
Like, it might just happen to be, like, that I have, like, long arms and I can kind of move through different positions. But I feel like with bikes like this, you can be more standard. You can be more aggressive. I suppose you can't be, you know, inclined backwards. <laughs> but there's a lot of real estate between the, the aggressive and standard that you can cruise between. Yeah, and sometimes when you're riding in that upright position, like you, and this is, I think, is just a human flaw, is you start to, like, Mm. Uh, hunch your back mm -hmm. so you can You're stack like your lower st spine but then yeah. it almost seems like your your back starts to hunch which is a yeah. which is a terrible position as it is so that'll hurt something to keep in mind as well and i think that's why if i can just have that make it instead of upright and i notice that about myself where i'm mm -hmm. upright and then my back is hunched mm -hmm. and when i think about it and get my back straight then it then it feels good. Yeah, but it's, it's kind like of activating like, the core. You yeah, feel like you you're have not to activating activate, your core. You have to activate your core. Yeah. And when you, it's just natural to mm. hunch over because that's yeah. the natural kind of way that, that you're sitting. So I think if I can make this a little bit more sporty and put it a little bit more on my arms instead of my back is, is a lot of where that's coming from. So it's a whole bunch of different things that I'm yeah. trying to do. And it, it could also be because I had that CBR and maybe you I just, just got accustomed to it. May, yeah. Maybe I just got accustomed to just it. Chasing a dragon. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, the bike's so damn fast. It's like, it, you know, I can ride it on the freeway. So why am I not going to ride it on the freeway? <laughs> yeah. You know, I just got to make it freeway rideable is all. Yeah. So I think when it comes to, power on this bike and it's a good segue into power mm. because a lot of people need to understand what this bike actually has so i think it's 849 cc 115 horsepower at i think like 9500 rpms this bike is about 125 horsepower mm -hmm. and the reason being is because i have a power commander in it uh, power commander 5 um, it also has an auto tuner, so it's got two different things in it. Um, it is mapped out for the M4 exhaust. The ECU has been flashed professionally by by the company that installed it. Um, and I ha also have the program on my PC, and I have plugged it into my laptop, and I can go through it as well. I can change the map. I can fuck with it all that I want as well. That's so cool. I think a lot of people don't realize that they can do that and that it's yeah. not as complicated as they think. Like it's you not. You can't no. mess it up, really. No, you can, you, can, you can buy the Power Commander for, I want to say, like 300, give or take, and then you can set it up yourself. Just like but USB. <laughs> if you take it in, you know, you're paying, okay, you're paying 300 plus or minus for the Power Commander, and then you're paying mm -hmm. 700 for them to do it. Yeah. And it's like a lot of people don't understand that you can do a lot of things by yourself on a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. um, it's not that hard changing your oil. It's not that hard changing your brake fluid. You did it. Yeah, I did it. And that was mostly without my help. You just. Oh yeah. I just looked it up on YouTube. On, yeah. It, you can do almost anything you want. So when it comes to ECU flashes or it comes to getting a power commander, no, it's not going to cost you a thousand dollars if you don't want it to. You can mm -hmm. spend a little bit of time by the power commander. In, yeah. Okay. The in installation is going to take you an hour hour and a half maybe two hours for people that don't know what they're doing mm -hmm. um but then you just download the map install the map onto it fuck around with it and you get what you want <laughs> so like i said this is running at about 125 horsepower it's incredibly fast the torque is absolutely insane and it's because of the power commander mm -hmm. and that came with it um something that did happen was when i got this bike the auto tuner wasn't plugged in. And I didn't notice this until maybe a couple days afterwards because the bike was acting a little bit strange. You were I, eating through gas. Yeah, I noticed I was getting like 14 miles to the gallon. <laughs> You're like, what is this, and a I, Ford truck? <laughs> yeah, and that was on the standard setting. And it, I put it to the B mode and I was getting like 18 miles to the gallon. And I'm just kind of thinking, well, what the heck? And this, uh, granted, you know, a couple days into riding this. So I hadn't even opened up the seat yet. Because I wanted to ride it. Yeah. Um, so very shortly after that, opened up the seat, looked at the power commander, and the power commander was plugged in, but the auto tuner wasn't plugged in, which means that the map that was set up for the power commander wasn't running at, at its efficiency, 
because the auto tuner wasn't in, wasn't plugged in. And I don't know why they did that. I don't know why the yeah. auto tune wasn't plugged in. Well, does, does it have anything to do with the fact that it was basically outfitted to be a racing bike or it's just like, well, yeah, it's like, why wouldn't you? No, it shouldn't. I don't know. know. Maybe there, it was there's an no oversight. reason. Yeah. There's no reason why it shouldn't be plugged in. Um, Maybe it was an accident. Yeah. Maybe they were servicing the bike and the guy forgot to plug it in. Yeah. Who yeah, knows? Yeah, maybe they had to do that when they... Uh, yeah, yeah, who knows? But no harm, no foul. Yeah. Just plug it in and now I'm getting, I think, average like 46 or 47 miles to the gallon. <laughs> that's so, an incredible difference. Yeah, <laughs> insane difference. And that's me riding it hard. That's yeah. me, you know, giving it some love <laughs> on several occasions. Oh. Um in public? <laughs> in public, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we PDA like nothing else. Aww. Oh, yeah. Cute. Very cute. I love I love my MT-09. Aw. Love my baby. After, geez, after only a couple months. You're still honeymooning, but with yeah, bikes, someday. the honeymoon's kind of forever. Yeah. <laughs> the honeymoon is forever. I'll always have a, a spot in my heart for my old one, but now I'm widowed, or yeah. I was widowed. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> um, so going through the modes on this bike, yeah, there's, uh, I've never had a bike with modes. <laughs> I was fascinated neither, by yeah. that. Me neither. I, the only time I've experienced it really, actually maybe the FZ07 had modes. I just didn't pay attention to when I rented that bike. I would assume that it had something. Yeah. It was like a 2015 though. So I'm like, uh, what if they didn't do modes then? I don't know. But the live yeah. wire, I toggle between modes and by God with a... <laughs> With an electric motorcycle. What are the modes on live wear? They were kind of like um, eco, rain, or like uh, traction-y stuff. Sure. I think there was maybe one more, and then there was sport. That's some Harley shit right there. Oh, and sport. Oh, my God. I Mm, felt my... Put that shit in sport. Put that shit in sport. (laughs) I I felt my... Yeah. I felt my organs behind me. and And that was me, like, just riding kind of... I don't really crank... And I was being pretty conservative with that. And wow, the zero to 60 on that thing is pff, something yeah. else. Do you know what the number is? Zero um, to 60? It's like... I'd be quite curious. I swear, it, the guy says it in my video. I think he okay. says zero to 60 in like six seconds? Or Mine's 2.9. Okay. Oh, so, maybe it was three seconds then. I think it was zero to 60 in three seconds and then mm-hmm. zero to 90 in another, like in nine. Total, yeah. Something like three, that. Three makes sense. Um Yours is less than three. Two point nine. Two oh, point Christ. nine zero to sixty. And if I'm on the XS XS nine hundred, I really want to test ride one of those. I've I have this whole little list of of bikes I've had crushes on, and and that's mm. one of them. And yeah, that would be something to get accustomed to because the the Ducati picks up, and the Ducati has a very sensitive throttle. I think I got pretty used to it, but it's funny on the lower speeds if I like lean on it too much, mm-hmm. if I'm just like feeling kind of lazy with my body, like then I'm doing kind of not stupid things, but you know, it's reactive. You can't just like do whatever. It's mm-hmm. like on some bikes, you could just crank it all day and it's not crazy responsive. And I think that's the difference mainly between like maybe mm-hmm. more beginner bikes, beginner friendly bikes. Is that was really that Bonneville. Forgiving. Bonneville yeah, was like, like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so fun. It's like powerful, but it's like metered power. This is like yeah. unadulterated pure yeah, this power. Is, this is incredible power. <laughs> yeah. They even give you Power modes. Oh, yeah, but the modes. So modes. I guess let me go through what this bike has. Um, Let me just go through the list, I guess. So obviously Power Commander. Um, It does have ABS. All the new MT-09s come standard with ABS. Traction control as well. Um, And then three speed modes. So when it comes to traction control, there's three modes, one, two, and off. One being wheelie assist, two being you can't wheelie, and off being you're going to f- flip the bike. Um, and then the speed modes, you got standard, which every t- it's kind of weird because every time you start up the bike, it starts in standard. And I don't know yeah. if that's just um, me, but that's what it seems like is happening. Hmm. Every time you start up the bike, it does start up in standard. Um, standard is incredibly fast. Um, would not recommend for a new rider or a new beginning rider. A is all holds bar. You get everything that this, that this beast has. All no holds bar, all holds bar, no holds bar. I think it's no holds bar. It is. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah. does that mean? Yeah, right. I don't know. Now that you say it, like no holds barred. But I barred. want all of it. Was it hold- yeah. And it's one of those ones that I bet a lot of people say wrong. Yeah. Like when people oh, say like, no lo holes. and behold, they don't realize it's like low and behold. No. I know. There's like yeah. no holds barred. We'll have to get to the bottom of that one. Yeah. That's like every so often I hear you from, and I'm like euphemism lady. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Cause I'm old timey and I read things. People don't read anymore. But anyways, it just reminds uh, yeah. me. Yeah. I try to be an oof, oof, euphemism man. Euphemism. <laughs> he's, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm no holds barred. He's hitting with the idioms. He's yeah. euphemism. Oof, oof, <laughs> Colloquialisms up in this man. piece. <laughs> So, A, no holds bar. <laughs> no bar um, holds. <laughs> and I'm sure that's where you get the 2.9 seconds from. It's absolutely incredible. Ooh. I only, I ride in standard maybe 80% of the time. And then the, the other 20 is in A. Um, and A is when I'm not in the city. Because when you're in the city riding in A, it's just absolutely insane. And it's, it's difficult. It's probably kind to, of annoying. It is annoying. It's difficult to control the bike. Mm. Um, because you're always going to be a first, second, or third gear for the majority of the time. And first, second, third gear in A is just, is just almost deadly. <laughs> um, B, is, B is B. You can ride. Um, and that's why like, I don't like to tell people especially or like newer riders like don't get this or get mm-hmm. this it's like you get whatever you want but when it comes to suggestions i would suggest not to get this yeah however if you do get this and you ride in b mode it's kind of it's just a regular motorcycle okay yeah. it, tr- it truly is that's what i say to people i mean i get asked that kind of stuff every so often and it's tough because i'm a responsible person. So I give a responsible person advice, but some people yeah. give advice for like the most reckless person ever. And they consider it irresponsible sure. to give regular advice, but it's kind of like people will do whatever. And they're not even watching a video on advice if they don't yeah. give a shit. <laughs> it's almost like drugs. It's like, that's why the, yeah. the dare program didn't work is because, <laughs> well, don't, don't tell me not to do it because it's going to kill me. Like, give me, give me the reasons. Here's and it's like, empirical data I'm not going to tell death. you not to get it, but I'm going to tell you the reasons why you should probably shy away from a mm-hmm. bike like this for a first bike. And how you've been riding for years and years. Probably like, like seven or eight years. Yeah. So you so, earned this baby. <laughs> yeah. My throttle control is excellent. Everything is excellent. It was excellent <laughs> since the first day that I had a motorcycle. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I dropped my F4i at a gas station and I'll never forget it. Yeah. Everybody was watching me. Oh, no. But, it, you know, you make stupid mistakes as 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 a new rider. That's and one of like the biggest reasons to kind of not go no hold bar on the first bike because yeah. there's just like really sure. random little things you might do. I remember on my Rebel, mm-hmm. I like had fixate at the stop sign and I went down on this like decline of a street and I, it was just so stupid. I was going like sure. five miles per hour around a little hairpin. It was a hairpin turn, but it was just like I fixated on the the other car and I didn't just keep yep. going and doing my thing. And then all of a sudden I'm on the ground. So yeah. it's just little things that intellectually you're like, why would I do this? But then you do. <laughs> and it's going to happen. And that's why it's like, I'm not going to tell you not to get a bike or what bike not to get, but it, you mm-hmm. should know that you're going to make stupid mistakes. Yeah, you will. And when you have a bike that the, the mistake threshold is higher, mm-hmm. you have a bigger chance Deadlier. of making one of those stupid mistakes. You're going to make a mistake. Yeah. So when it comes to this bike, do I recommend it for a new person? No, not at all. But I'm not going to tell you not to get it. You've been warned. <laughs> You've you know? been warned. You, the bike is beautiful. It's fucking gorgeous. Yeah. You want to learn on the... Psh, put it in B mode and you yeah. do you, but you better know you're probably going to drop it. And uh, you're or not going to be Or flip it upside happy. down. <laughs> or flip it upside down. Gosh. I, I put... Back um, on that. I put... The no traction control. You remember that when we were picking that up? Oh, when he guys, was like, you're like, so I should always buy. He's like, yeah, always on, <laughs> always on traction control, always on. I do always have it on. I yeah. always have it on one because <laughs> I it's a wheelie. It's it's wheelie assist. It's literally wheelie assist in the best way possible. Yeah. Um, even cornering. You see like MotoGP bikes. It's 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 like MotoGP traction control where the, the wheel's going to pop up, but mm-hmm. it. It manages it. It manages it very well. So you can even be coming around a corner and front wheels up in the air just slightly, but still cornering on, on the first traction control. Two, 
it won't even come up. Your bike just shuts off. Not shuts off, but your yeah. your engine it's heavily like, throttles back two immediately. two wheels making contact. <laughs> yeah. Um, traction control is wonderful. It truly is. Um, to, to try to wheelie without traction control is, is quite the feat. Um, it's very difficult to do. It's not difficult. It's just it's very scary to do because of the amount of low-end torque on this bike. Mm. It's very easy. I can see it being very easy to flip. Mm. So I'm... I'm extremely uh, hesitant on that. I did it once. Yeah. I told you about that with Terry. Oh, I turned off traction yeah. control. I wheel because he was like wheelie away, and I was like, okay. So I was like, well, I'm gonna turn off traction control, <laughs> and I, I I dropped the clutch, wheelied up, and it went so high that I bugged out, uh, let go of the throttle, and it dropped down. But then I had the adrenaline going, so I hit the throttle again, and then the front wheel popped up off the ground high again, and then I got scared and let it go, and it's just like bang, bang. <laughs> so <laughs> I learned forks. my lesson. <laughs> yeah, I learned my lesson. Yeah, my poor forks. Poor forks. <laughs> You've done such, such good things for heroic me. Heroic work. Yeah, heroic work for me. But no, so I always keep it on uh, number one, and then standard, for the most part, standard, mm-hmm. when riding in the city. But the other day, that that was that was a, because I was out in the out in the uh, out in the boonies. Yeah, on the boonies, just fucking ripping. Mm. <laughs> this bike is so fucking amazing. Oh, so fun. Yeah. I wonder if my bike has modes, and I just don't even know because I'm ignorant. I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to check it out. <laughs> yeah. I, this bike <laughs> needs <laughs> modes. That's yeah. the thing. I think my bike is pretty bare bones. I mean, that was like a choice they made with the scramblers. Mm-hmm. It was like a little bit of that nostalgia factor. I mean, it doesn't even have a gear indicator or like the gas gauge stuff. So Ooh, mine has a gear indicator. <laughs> now, you know, incredible. Yeah. Like to have going to snitch on you during moto vlogs. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know until you know that you need a, a gear indicator. You're like, Oh, that's, that's nice to know. Yeah. yeah I've definitely I, been questioning where I am. Yeah. I always had it in my head where I am. But there's some times where you don't know, and then yeah. you flip it and all, all the way down to like, first, the and <laughs> yeah. then you go up, I'm back like up to third, and it's like, okay, <laughs> I'm back in third. But the gear indicator, <laughs> now that I have it, it is, it is wonderful. It really is. It's those features, it's those modern yeah. conveniences. Just the small features. That's why I think this, that's what, one reason I've been really attracted to this bike is it's got these modern conveniences, but... It's almost like postmodern, you know, mm-hmm. uh, in terms of like literary movements and stuff like that. It's got this modernness, but not um, some of the hyper naked or some of these naked bikes are really, really aggressive looking, super mm. aggressive looking, very cut up looking. Yeah. So this still, it cruises a very nice middle ground. It does. And like I said, I looked at so many different bikes after, yeah, you're I, particular. after I lost mine. Very particular person. And this was the one. Um, even the FZs, I didn't like the FZs. Mm-hmm. The difference... There's a big uh, look difference between the FCs and the MTs, and the mm. MT was just almost perfect. And that's what I thought yeah. about the 2000, the 03 CBR 600 RR. Yeah, is I, I, it was just very simple. That specific one. Yeah. Simple, elegant. The 03 CBR 600 RR is specifically my favorite one. <laughs> well, it's it's the closest to MotoGP, um, and I, I always tell you that uh, the 03 CBR is the most closest replicated to the moto gp bikes with its plastics and its design and you can see that and no other cbr is like that that's why it was so difficult to lose that thing but mm-hmm. when it came to the mt um some it just kind of caught my eye because it's not overdone a lot of these newer bikes like you said they have so many different stupid um just crazy contours yeah con- they look like starved <laughs> it's not even curves it's like it's just sharp edges, yeah, just cuts. constant sharp edges, or just overdone on on the plastics or the design. It's just overdone. Yeah, I've been a little anti-plastics in my day. <laughs> yeah, no, yours is perfect too. Like yeah. it's, we both just have perfectly designed bikes. It's not overdone. It's not too little. The colors yeah. are just beautiful. Mm-hmm. Mine might be a little bit more like poppy. Yeah. Than yours, but I think that was the idea. Uh, I see a lot of motors, even the new... Uh, Everything's black. Even the new Aprilia came out, and they mm-hmm. have... Uh, what was that gold? It was like that muted oh, gold. Oh, yeah. Uh, burnt yeah. gold or... Well, I don't remember. Uh, smelted gold. 
I don't know. It's a weird gold color, but they came out and they said, oh, you know, we're trying something new. Same mm-hmm. with uh, Kawasaki's. They're coming out with some new shit and the colors kind of suck. Mm-hmm. But the Yamaha came out with this, this ice fluorescent and it's just, it's just gorgeous. It just works. Yeah. So a lot of, a lot of newer companies are coming out with either stupid designs or um, stupid graphics, in my opinion. <laughs> well, and I think like the risky colors are really great as an accent. I think that's why this works so well. Because imagine in the inverse, if it were mostly that that red orange and then oh, the God, accent, no. like it would just be way too much. Oh yeah. So I think that's a nice blend, and it's really tasteful, and, and it's intermittently yeah. in- incorporated into it. And that really works. Yeah, I was always against colored wheels, but I like this. And something to note. The color, colored wheels. Okay, so what happens when you ride? Mm. What gets dirty? The wheels. The wheels. Yeah, mine are always dirty. (laughs) Okay, and your chain. When you lube up the chain, what happens? Oh, sputters everywhere. Flings lube. Okay, where does that lube go? The wheels. (laughs) Okay, so your wheels always get dirty. Take a look. Take a look at your wheels. Look at your dirty, nasty wheels. Dirty as fuck. You should be cleaning your wheels as often as your teeth. (laughs) When it comes to this bike, what is beautiful about it? The wheels. Well, a lot of things, but also the wheels. (laughs) When you first see. When you ride this bike for too long without cleaning it, it doesn't look good. Crusty. It looks... It that is lo- a nice thing about black bikes. Or yes. Like brushed colored bikes is mm-hmm. it, it disguises a little. So, okay, when I had the CBR, I never washed the wheels because they're black. Who cares? <laughs> um, I washed the fairings. It's almost opposite with this bike. No mm. fairings, but I have to wash the wheels. Um, there's a huge difference, as you know, when you wash your bike, you, you wash it, you wax it up, whatever you need to do to it, it looks gorgeous. Everybody looks at it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's gorgeous. It's the same with this bike. When you wash it, it looks gorgeous. However, when you don't, it looks extra nasty. Busted, crusted, and dusted. Because these wheels look busted, crusted, and dusty. <laughs> so... Um, instead of washing plastics, I wash wheels. <laughs> it's your lot in life. <laughs> <laughs> but you always stay on top of it. I always stay on top of it. I like to wash my bike. It's a very therapeutic process. You know, coming out on a Sunday morning, it's, you know, 65, 70 degrees. It's, you mm-hmm. know, it's going to be a 75, 80 degree day. And you're planning on riding for the day and you wash your bike. Yeah. It's just a very ther- therapeutic process. You listen to the birds cheering you on. <laughs> cheering you on. Mm-hmm. It's amazing all the periphery, periphery things about riding or about motorcycle ownership that are therapeutic outside of just the ride. And if you haven't seen my video, you should. <laughs> if you're watching this long, you've probably seen it. But I did a video on how motorcycling is akin to meditation and how it's stress relieving and therapeutic. And I'd even graze the topic of motorcycle maintenance or just care and miscellaneous other stuff like that. And Mm -hmm. it just like teaches you kind of responsibility in a different way. I think a lot Mm -hmm. of people are in a way craving kinds of responsibility in the modern era and we're postponing adulthood in certain ways, but Mm -hmm. in some ways you can be a daddy. (laughs) And it can turn you into an adult. And when I was talking about, um, you know, when you can install the power commander, you can install it for 300 or you can install it for over a thousand dollars. It can empower you to like, it's the same thing. Become savvy. It's mm-hmm. like you're, it's like throwing yourself in that environment. It's not hard. You just have to do it. You just yeah. do it once you, you change your oil once you spend the extra time one time, and you know like, how oh. to do it. <laughs> yeah. You need some equipment, Yeah. right? What do you need? You need an oil pan. Okay. Mm-hmm. What do you need next? You need a, a wrench to get off your um, oil filter. Yeah, I might invest in one That's of those special it. ones. Because the have wrench, it. well, no, 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 no. I don't think I ended up buying like one of those vice grip things. I think I just used a wrench I already had. Mm. And it worked. Are you sure? Yeah, I just saw it. Oh, how did I forget that? Okay, I've been fact checked. I use this, but it took off some of the paint. If you're like, 
a perfectionist. It took off some of the paint of the new oil filter, so I would put like a little felt on it or something. <laughs> Your oil filter is probably underneath the exhaust pipes yeah, no or underneath the plastics. I can see it though, and I know it's there. Sure. <laughs> Beautiful kinky, equipment like that. Shit. Like gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. Get your you know, get some damn equipment. Service your bike. Make you know, girl wants some love. Oh, it won't make contact. That's a it's just the nature of it. <laughs> That's the point of it. That is the point of it. I just it's not the best tool for ASMR. No. <laughs> I gotta put it around your head. Yeah, it's like, sometimes. Yeah, let's give her a lobotomy. <laughs> <laughs> Hold still, girl. <laughs> it's like, it's like I want to say we would have done this anyways, but the whiskey is definitely helping. <laughs> With a, I don't even know where to put this because uh, I'll put it here. Yeah. So the point being, get your own, get your own equipment, service your own bike, love her and she'll love you back. Share your equipment. Share your equipment. Oh my God, that's huge. (laughs) Yeah. Well, especially with like, like one thing that, um, that chain doodad that you bought, that thing was like 50 bucks. Yeah. The, the riveter. The riveter. Yes. The master. That was probably the most expensive and stupidest thing that I've ever bought for my motorcycle. But you know, now I can change my yeah. chain anytime I want. Yeah. Most expensive for what it was. For yeah. what it was, exactly. Yeah. For what it was. They gouge you. They gouge you for sure. And 50 bucks is, I think I got it on sale because mm. it was like clearance or some shit. Yeah. I don't remember. And when you're holding, you're like, this is $50. Yeah, <laughs> this tiny little case. Yeah. But yeah. hey, now I have it. Funny story, you know, coming back to when you get your own equipment, I bought a battery tender. Mm-hmm. Um, because I had two batteries die this past year because I'm stupid. Um, but I was getting on my bike right out the front door and there was some dude on a Harley who was trying to start it across the street. And my bike was right in front of him. And I said, oh, you having battery troubles? Because it sounded like he was having battery troubles. And he's like, yeah, it's dead. I was like, well, you can try and bump start it. And he's like, you have one of those? I'm like, no, man, it's a, it's a, it's a process. It's a Look it up. Yeah. <laughs> technique. Look it up on YouTube. And I was like, ah, fuck it here. I got a battery tender. So I, you know, walked back and gave him a battery tender and he dropped it off the next day. So it's like you get this equipment and you share it with other people and mm-hmm. people will share it with you. And you're and, a hero and it's like nothing to you. You already made the investment. And I heard him go for a ride that night. Yeah. And yeah, it's one like of the last nights. The stand I bought. Yeah. Yeah. And mm-hmm. here it sits and I use it all the time because my bike looks dope as fuck on a stand. Yes. <laughs> I just like to look at it on a stand. But yeah. obviously, you know, when I'm it, when I'm doing the chain, yeah, you're going to you're going to have to spend some money. But spending money on all this equipment is going to um, pay for itself in the short term instead of just mm-hmm. bringing it to a company and having them do it for you because they're going to gouge you straight up gouge you. I love how much we've been like mom and dad on this segment. <laughs> People need to know. Y'all, yeah. y'all. Children. Y'all don't know. Somebody's just yeah. got to tell you. And My we're BBs. telling you right now. I'm telling you Love BBs. your bike and do it yourself. Yeah. That's, that's part of the beauty of owning a motorcycle. And all the oldies in the crowd are like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Y'all oldies, you guys know. Shit. And then they even have like YouTube. It's so accessible with YouTube. It's too yeah. easy. Servicing used to be easier too. Mm, um, that's true. Servicing cars Bikes used to be easier. Things have changed a lot. Yeah. But it's still not impossible to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's gotten a little difficult, but YouTube, YouTube University, check yourself in. It's free. <laughs> check yourself in. <laughs> like it's a it's an inter- internet subscription. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. I mean, I think that about covers it. I hope everyone enjoyed this casual kickback, talking bikes, talking follow-up to the first impressions of the Yamaha MT-09, a 2019 edition in Ice Fluo. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Or Flow. Ice Flow? I like Flux. I like Ice Flux. Yeah, makes sense to me. Yeah, short for fluorescent. Also, if you have my motorcycle, your mom's not happy. (laughs) For the rest of you upstanding citizens, thank you so much for watching. If you dig my shirt, you could get one of your own. I sell them in sizes that fit men and women of a broad range. And they're for sale on my website, www.greatlakesupplyco.com. 
they were all designed by me, original designs. There's new stuff coming out every so often, and I have a lot of fun things in store uh, coming up very soon. If you like this video, you should like it. And don't forget to subscribe while you're at it. And until next time, ride safe. Bye. I got, I got, I got goals to hit the road, spread the gospel around the globe. Had my son draping gold, as he knows. Think you money making, bitch, you boys, bro.